Welcome back to the channel everyone, it's Nathan from Rulebooks here, and this week I'm doing Knitter King. Okay, so for this piece I had a few ideas in mind that I wanted to make sure it came through uh, really well for the whole piece. Um, and that was this idea of Knitter King emerging from the forest. Uh, the perspective, I wanted us to be lower than Knitter King and, and really show the, the size and scale of the monster. And lastly, I wanted to make sure that I did all of the detailing myself. And by that, I mean not using overlay layers for the skin um, or any kind of specialty brushes for the skin. I wanted to paint them myself. Uh, when I did the Nitto Reno, um, I did an overlay and I didn't like the end product. I thought I actually did it better myself. So for Nitto King, I wanted to challenge myself by doing it myself. Another challenge I put forward to myself on this painting was I, I wanted to really drive home the idea of uh, not settling for the first sketch that I put down. And you'll see that this is uh, many different sketches um, that I kept throwing back um, the opacity and sketching over the top. And I, I just really wanted to push myself to, if I wasn't satisfied with a particular shape or texture that I would just go back over the top of it um, and repaint it. So it took a few tries before I ended up even getting to the multiply layers and screen layers and playing around with the lighting. Uh, I really changed the design quite a lot um, and as you can see here the, the head was a massive change. Uh, I thought the original design that I kept uh, sketching down was too reptilian. It looked like a dinosaur and I really didn't want the dinosaur look I kept trying to make it look like a rhinoceros, but the, the pose I wanted was a big roaring maw, and rhinos don't really have that, so I looked to another animal that I thought was similar, um, and that was the hippopotamus. So you can, you can see quite clearly there the inspiration of the, the hippo's head, uh, which does change throughout the piece as well. Once I had a sketch down that I I liked enough, um, I went into the background, threw in some saturated colors uh, so that I could tell how saturated pink was going to be uh, in relation to the rest of the piece. This piece did take quite a long time because I didn't settle uh, for anything. I did, uh, I just kept going back over the top and re-looking at the, the details, changing shapes and changing the designs. If something wasn't working quite right, I the top of it. Uh, this head, I can you can see I'm changing the, the shape as well. I thought the, the snout wasn't long enough, uh, so I tried to reshape it a little bit to make it a bit longer um, and give space for that big horn that came up the top of, of Nitto King's head. An interesting thing I did here was I got really stuck into detailing and rendering the, the head that it ended up getting really saturated compared to the rest of the body and Later on, I, I had to really fix that. With the head, I actually got a little carried away with rendering it uh, before everything else, and the result of that was that the head ended up really, really saturated compared to the rest of the body, and I had to really tweak that at the end with overlay layers, making sure that everything balanced out. And then with the, the chest piece, uh, I did repaint that. Entirely. I tried a little, a few different things. I wanted it to look like an exoskeleton, especially around the rib cage, but uh, it just wasn't looking that way. So um, I did go back over the top of it and uh, the neck as well. The, the neck just didn't read the way I wanted it to. I, I did want a lot of folds and um, sort of scaly skin, uh, but at this, at this stage it was just too messy. Um, so I, I did go back over the top of it, completely changed the lighting and uh, really was happy with the end result. I held off on the claws for a long while. Uh, they 
bothered me quite a bit as I was painting everything. Um, but I wasn't quite sure on the values um, and the, the colors um, that I would have on them. So I waited until I did this multiply layer and then came in and, and smoothed them out. And I used a um, armadillo as reference for the, the gloss. Then for the, the background and the foreground, I used tons of different brushes, um, basically just going crazy with different textures. Um, and then going back over the top with the with Dave Greco's DG main. Um, I find it, when I'm painting traditionally, that's a, a strategy I use quite often uh, when uh, trying to get textures down. I just, I, I get a, a real textured brush and kind of go crazy and then figure out uh, where everything fits afterwards. So with this one, guys, um, I do have to take a bit of a break from doing all of the weekly Pokemon. Um, I am starting a few new projects coming up next week, uh, which is going to take a lot of time, and uh, I won't be able to keep up with the Pokemon. So I will be putting them on a pause, but I will be resuming them. Um, I'm having a great time doing all of these, and it's teaching me a lot. I hope you guys are getting something out of it. Everything is available on Instagram. Um, so you can check out my Instagram, which is uh, rook.books, um, and all of these are available there. Thank you so much for watching, and as soon as I can, I will be back on YouTube with Farfetch'd. Whoa,